All right. I think we're live. What's up, guys? Um, oh, Grace is here. Allie's here. Joy. Brian Miner. Mr. C. I like it. Good morning. Happy Monday. Um, appreciate the compliment, Caleb. Thank you very much. I'm in dire need of a haircut. I got this quarantine hair. <laughs> um, yeah. So, why don't you guys uh, tell me what you guys did for quarantined Easter. I want to hear you guys do anything creative or anything like that. I guess I could say well, what I did. I, uh, I got to see my nieces. We went over, had a little get together and ate a ton of food. Um, so I got to have brisket. My brother-in-law made brisket and cheesy potato casserole, which I could eat an entire pan of, and almost did. Um, <laughs> okay, Jake Bennett, you should cut my hair. You have a lot of experience. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Jake Van Sickle, you guys did a scavenger hunt. That's fun. Bryn did a fondue night. That is amazing. Did you do that with your family? Or did you do that with the girls at the, uh, at the hive? Anyway, I think there's a delay, so. Um, yeah. Okay, so this morning. Oh, family, cool. Sweet. <laughs> oh my goodness, Jake Bennett, Cornish hens and lamb loin chops. Big blue. Had a good Easter lunch together. That's amazing. Yeah, we got to do an indoor Easter egg hunt for my two nieces, which consisted of a, a small living room and kitchen area, uh, which was uh, really fun. And then they hid them for us, which, made, which meant that they threw all of the eggs under the kitchen table and said they were ready for us. So we went and found them. Um, cool. All right, um, so we're going to be talking about solitude this morning, but before we get into it, I'm gonna, I just want to pray. I want to remind you guys of why we do this. Um, the idea of what we're doing here um, is in this quarantine thing, a lot of how we stay connected is going to be virtually like this, and I just want to encourage you guys um, that with these devos and with um, all the things that we're doing, we are trying to create rhythms for you guys. We're trying to supplement your your walk with God and trying to encourage you guys um, to just spend time with the Lord um, each morning. And these um, these devos are designed to try and encourage you guys in that. And so we started at nine thirty eight, and this is a reminder that we want to be praying. Matthew 9.38, um, which talks about raising up laborers for the harvest, that God would raise up laborers for the harvest. So let's, let's pray together real quick. Um, Lord, Father, you are so good to us. Um, we just celebrated Easter, and we thank you so much for everything that you've done for us. It's, um, it's beyond comprehension. Uh, we talk about your son coming down here and paying the ultimate price, becoming legally responsible for our sin, um, which is just an absurd thought. But it's reality, Lord, and you love us. So we thank you for that, and we thank you for reminding us of that. Um, we thank you for everything. And we, and we ask that you would continue to build in us and build us up that you would work through us and that you would continue to raise up laborers even in this strange time, Lord, that laborers would be raised up for your kingdom. 
um, and that you would spur us on uh, through little things like this, Lord. So just ask that you would use this, that it would be beneficial to everybody, uh, that we could walk away encouraged. Yeah, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. So, oh, little Jay's in the house. That's good. That is good. Now we can start. Um, so I don't know what your guys' experience is with solitude. I'll start first by saying that I am not a professional at the discipline of solitude or anything like that. Definitely not a pro, um, but it is something that has been on my radar, especially for the past few months. Um, I've been far more conscious of it. Um, and I think during the quarantine, I've become even more conscious of how difficult it really is to get good time with the Lord that is away from all distractions and away from everything else. So I'm going to define what solitude is, what, I, what I'm talking about, and I, think, I just think that would be really helpful. So here's my definition. Solitude is, uh, the discipline of solitude is proactively choosing to be alone and to dwell in our experience of isolation from others with the goal of freeing yourself from the normal patterns of life. Um, so what I'm saying is, I, I guess it'd be worth defining what it's not. Saying that you need some solitude is not some spiritual excuse to kind of hole up in your, in your sort of, I don't know, in your lounge area or your dorm room or something and just say, I need to be away from people. I just want to kind of have me time. And I would say that that's not what solitude is. Solitude is not me time. Uh, it's time to really dig into your soul. Because a lot of the time, what me time means is we want to avoid dealing with the things that are buried deep inside of us. Um, we want to uh, veg out. We want to just be comfortable. We want to eat what we want to eat. We want to watch what we want to watch. We want to almost like just turn off. And I would say that um, solitude is not that. Solitude is purposely removing all the things um, that you run to, to run away from your soul, and creating a space where those silent, like those soft whispers of your soul will start to surface. Um, so there's a book that I think describes it this really well. It's called Disruptive Witness. Um, and I actually, I really think this is a very relatable, where is it? I got to find the page I wanted to read. There's a couple paragraphs and I just think it'd be worth it for me to read this, um, to sort of paint a picture here. Okay. So this is, this is the first page, a little teaser of this book, which I would recommend. It's really good, especially the first half. Um, okay. The person I'm most uncomfortable being alone with is myself. And that's okay, because I've become very good at avoiding myself. For example, if I get stuck alone on an elevator and I start to feel the anxiety, um, the dread of having to examine my life even for a minute, I just take out my phone and poof, it's gone. Or if I sense that I need to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with myself, about sin or doubt or fear, all of a sudden I remember that it's my night to do the, di do the dishes and I can't do the dishes without listening to a podcast. Self-avoidance is probably my most advanced skill set. I've developed it over the years in response, to, uh, in response to the burden of being alone, which can bring up so many unsettling truths. Of course, I have plenty of help from the rest of society. I'm always being encouraged to read something, to do something, to watch something, or to buy something new. It's an unspoken but mutually agreed upon truth for modern people that being alone with our thoughts is disturbing. Um, and it keeps going, and it's good, so you should read it. Um, but I think when I read that, I was like, that really does describe me uh, at some points more than others in my life but I would say that um, 
I guess I could just get personal about this. My, there was a, there was a period in my life where I had a really hard time just going to bed without having some sort of uh, background noise or like a show on TV or something playing, um, you know, on my phone or radio or something like I needed something to keep my mind occupied, um, in order that I could go to sleep because I knew that when I laid down, I would have to deal with the sort of uncomfortable, like thoughts in my, in my own heart trying to surface. Like, and I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that stuff is supposed to happen. Like I'm not supposed to be able to just live my life going all through life without dealing with those thoughts that I I know are down there and then know that I'm running from. Um, I don't know if anybody uh, that's watching uh, can relate, but I I would imagine that is something that a lot of you guys uh, have a hard time with too, is, is how do I actually deal with myself. I hate actually reflecting on that. So the discipline of solitude is the idea that we are going to do whatever we can to, we're going to do whatever we can to put ourselves in a situation where we have to deal with that stuff, where we have to deal with all the things we hide from on a daily basis. Um, and I think real quick, I just want to take you through a few verses in the gospel, in the gospels, um, that show that Jesus was all about this. Uh, Jesus was all about getting on his own and figuring things out and dealing with his heart. And he was Jesus, right? We have messed up hearts and he doesn't. So, uh, Matthew 4, 1, it says, then Jesus was led up by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Uh, so that one he went into the wilderness literally for 40 days without eating or drinking, just to be tempted by the devil. So solitude is not me time. <laughs> That's not what Jesus was doing. Um, there's another one, Mark 1.35. It shows, this, these verses are showing a trend in Jesus' life. Mark 1.35 says, And rising very early in the morning, while it was still dark, he departed and went out to a desolate place, and there he prayed. So yeah, I mean, this has to do with prayer too, but um, a big part of this was that Jesus woke up in order to get alone, and he would get away from everybody else. He purposely did this um, over and over. Uh, Luke four forty two says basically the same thing. And when uh, and when it was day, he departed and went to it into a desolate place. And even there, it it keeps going. It says, and people sought him and came to him and would have kept him from leaving them. So, like, he, even in his pursuit of trying to get alone, people were still chasing, uh, still chasing Jesus down, and he couldn't really just have time to deal with all that stuff. So he had to, he had to really set, he had to really try hard um, to create, to create the environment um, to get away from people. And then the last one I want to point out is Matthew 14. 23. Um, and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening there, he was, uh, when evening came, he was there alone. Um, so what, uh, what is this really saying? Jesus had a trend in his life, a pattern that was very clear that he had to get away from people. Um, now, an introvert might, might hear that and say, amen, like, that's what I want to do. I just want to get away from people. Um, but that's not the purpose of solitude. The purpose of solitude is to get into this rhythm. And we're created for rhythms. We're created to engage with people, and we're created to get away with from people. And so the purpose of getting away from people is always with this in mind. It's always with the idea of coming back to people in mind. Uh, one common thing that I've heard, I, I don't know if it's actually common, but I was looking into this and, and one quote that I heard was that we don't retreat um, from the world, we retreat for the world. So the idea is that we want to get away 
so that we can find resolve um, and peace with, with those things that we hate dealing with. So when we actually deal with them, we can come back and we're free. We're emotionally free. We can actually engage with people in a way that's helpful. Um, so, yeah. I want to just help you guys. Um, I want to try and paint a picture of like, okay, so you, this is like this weird concept of um, solitude. What do, you, what do you actually do? Uh, how are you actually supposed to do that? Um, well, I, I did it this weekend. I did it on Saturday. I set a really intentional time for a couple hours to like put myself, I know we're in quarantine. It's weird. Uh, but I put myself in, uh, one of our rooms in the house, uh, that had no distractions really. And for the first, I'd say 30 minutes, I tried to block out all input possible it means like yeah I had a bible on hand um, I had other things but my phone was off and my bible was closed I tried n to not even deal with any input at all for the first 30 minutes before I started even to crack open the bible and engage with the word and I think what you'll find is if you try and do something like that it is so uncomfortable <laughs> Uh, so this is my experience. It is so difficult to do this uh, nowadays and actually like um, just be okay with it. You just sit in a room. Like how weird is it? Honestly, you just sit in a room and you're kind of just like, I'm so used to pulling out my phone. I'm so used to reading a book. I'm so used to putting in earphones and listening to something like that's just what we do. But you take away all those things and, and like we've trained ourselves to avoid any sense, any sense that time, uh, I think it's just the idea of absence, absent moments, absent periods of time. So to do it, your experience, if you guys do this, uh, your experience, I'm not going to try and say that it's going to be like really pleasant. I will say that it's going to be good, but it might not be pleasant. Um, so the first thing that you experience is like a certain level of anxiety. So like you, you experience a level of anxiety in the sense that uh, you start to question if this is like, this is just like stupid, like what am I doing? Uh, am I even doing this right? What am I supposed to like be thinking about or anything like that? But I think the biggest idea is that you just wanna show up and just practice being alone and practice uh, I didn't say this earlier, but silence, the idea of silence really goes hand in hand with solitude. Um, so you just want to just try being alone and silence all other input um, and just see what happens. And you'll start out being anxious, probably, if you're not used to it. And then you experience probably a, new, a next phase, which will be like a huge range of emotions, usually... Uh, not the pleasant emotions, usually the pretty unpleasant emotions like um, anger or bitterness. Those things seem to boil up um, to the surface when there's nothing else to really occupy your mind. Um, some things that, that keep you kind of down uh, or discouraged or depressed, those are the types of things that really um, need addressing during this time. And so what happened for me was some of these, some of these unpleasant um, thoughts came to surface and I was forced to grapple with them and I was forced to deal with them. And so I went to God and I think that's right. So I blocked out the next hour and a half specifically to just try my best to listen to God. So I want to just listen to him. What that means is I'm not like doing some in-depth um, study uh, or, or anything like that. I was just kind of looking at a few things in, in scripture that were very important uh, to me in that moment or, or pertaining to a certain topic. And then a lot of prayer. And what I mean by prayer is like open and honest 
everything out there on the table with God in prayer. Um, it was not reciting certain lines as much as it was just me dealing with the things that were really there. And it's so healthy and so helpful. And that, that would be my encouragement for any of you guys. If, if you're feeling like it is just really hard to do this, <laughs> especially being in, in quarantine, you're locked up in your house, you're, you can't really even get away all that easy. Like, yeah, I, I was wondering, how do I even encourage you guys to try and practice solitude during this? Um, it's really hard to just get away even. And the day I did it, it was like icing outside. So it's like, <laughs> I'm not going on a walk or anything. Um, so I just hold up in a room and really engaged with God in that way. Um, and that would be my encouragement for you guys is to try and get this to be some, somewhat of a thing that you even try in your life. I don't know if you guys have even tried this once in your whole life. Um, but, uh, I, that I really would encourage it. Um, something else that I, that I found when I was looking at this was a, now this is probably like not a, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It's an experiment done on mice. So it's kind of maybe a little bit cruel. Um, but I was reading in one of the books and this guy was talking about the idea of solitude and he found that, um, well, he didn't find it. There was a report done that a mouse, an individual mouse, in in uh, isolation takes 20 times more amphetamine to kill than a bunch of mice in a community and sometimes the mouse the mice in the community will actually die just because the other mice are dying around them even if they haven't been given any poison basically and so his point was saying now does this go against the idea of community it's like no um, I think what it shows is the power of community and the power of isolation. Um, that community can be an amazing thing if it's godly community and it can really push you. Um, but the same can be true if you don't have good community. If you're just in the world day by day, and I'd say this might even be more relevant when we're in the internet age and you're just scrolling through uh, all sorts of social media, the influence that that is having on you is probably real. The influence that Netflix and Tiger King has on you is probably real. Um, it just it just changes the way you think, and it, that's what happens. And so, if you're in isolation, if you're getting away from it all, I think it's it's true that it is just you have a more resilient mindset if you're seeking God in your isolation <clears throat> all that to be said what what has to be done is we have to deal with the things in our heart and that isn't done except it's, it's, it's just on you it's on you to get time with God um, so that would be my encouragement to you all and I want to give you oh I didn't even say this my experience, I didn't say this. So you experience anxiety and you experience a, a whole range of emotions that are really difficult to deal with sometimes. <laughs> but in the end, sometimes, hopefully, you'll walk away. This was my experience. You'll walk away with a sense of peace and a sense of freedom that those things have kind of like been dealt with. I've gotten them off my chest. I've gotten them and I've cast them on the Lord, and he's really given me peace. Philippians 4, uh, 6 through 8 talks about that. And uh, so you have peace, and that's why we do it. So we, we get away from the world so that we can come back to the world free and ready to engage and love. Um, so I want to give you a couple tips before we take off. Uh or before we finish here. So, how can we do this? Uh, I want you guys to know that a lot of what silence or solitude is, 
uh, is really like prayer in the sense that really these disciplines go together a lot and, and silence and solitude can be really supplemental to a lot of your other things like Bible reading doesn't have to be uh, a separate discipline than uh, being in solitude and prayer isn't a separate thing a lot of there's a lot of overlap there we're just focusing on solitude today and why it's important um, but here's here's the uh, here's the tips you need to be proactive and not reactive and this goes for pretty much all the disciplines you need to be proactive not reactive so if you want to live a life that is like something you're actually like consciously and contemplatively um, living the opposite of that is just a reactionary life you need to be proactive and you need to actually deal with things you don't want to coast through life as if you're browsing on Facebook and you're just liking and reacting to things that's not how life is supposed to be lived you want to engage and I think the only way to really do that is to get away from everything else so you can really think about what you what you're doing with your life um, so you want to be proactive not reactive and then the, my last encouragement would be to start where you're at not where you should be um, so this might be the most overwhelming type of thing to to hear is like go get away for a few hours or even a, a whole day where you just block everything else out and you just kind of devote yourself to um, to just being quiet in the presence of the Lord being alone being by yourself um, that is an overwhelming thing I remember when people said go spend an hour with God when I was like first uh, like when I was first building disciplines into my life and that was like a daunting task to me you want me to spend a whole hour with God it's like usually that just means reading my Bible right well, somebody told me to pray for an hour once, and I was like, is that even humanly possible to pray for a whole hour? Um, it just blew my mind that people would actually do that stuff. And what I found is that, oh, it's, it's, like, it's really doable, but you just have to kind of get there. It's like working out. You, you can't just bench press 500 pounds day one. Um, so... That's what I say. If what it means for you to start practicing solitude means to take 10 minutes in the morning to just get everything else, all distractions out, um, then that's what you should do. Don't think you need to go like on a weekend getaway, isolated, like, you know, Bear Grylls or something, um, just to have some sort of <laughs> some sort of godly encounter that's not that's not what we're talking about we're talking about just being um, getting getting everything off your heart um, off of your conscience and getting rid of all the input just so you can be free to engage with your soul and I know that we are so uncomfortable doing that in our day and age which is why we need to do it so that's my encouragement for all you guys. Um, I think that's I think that's everything I wanted to talk about. So I think I'll just end it and uh, pray real quick. So yeah, yeah. Father, you love us so much. Uh, you are there for us the whole time, Lord. We are so uh, prone to believe lies about you and about ourselves. We're so prone to wander, uh, but you're there, and you're the same God that you've always been, and you've always loved us. You've always um, served, <laughs> uh, served to the point of death, Lord. And I just ask that you would make it so real to us uh, that these things that we're all maybe hiding from or running away from the things that we don't want to deal with, Lord, help us to deal with them. Help us to be honest with ourselves 
and help us not to just believe anything that we subconsciously hear, but that you would, that you would give clarity, uh, that you, your Holy Spirit would guide us in our thoughts and that we would only believe truth that comes from you and that anything from Satan would fall to the ground <clears throat> and die, um, that we would not believe lies, Lord. Um, so help us, um, because it is so difficult, Lord, and I think it's more difficult than it ever has been. Um, Lord, help us to be comfortable, or help us to be okay being out of our own comfort zone. And I ask that everybody who's watching or ever will watch this would actually put this into practice in some way in their life, and that you would answer, um, that you would meet them there, uh, that it would be a huge benefit to their life. So it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. All right. I hope you guys have an awesome Monday. Good luck with all your classes. And um, if you can, block out some time. Get away from it all and just uh, spend a little time with God. That's it. All right. Love you guys.